This story is called Latimer, Ridley and Cranmer, The Bishop Martyrs, and it's another story from Trial and Triumph by Richard Hanula. Awesome stories from church history. Mary Tudor, crowned Queen of England in the summer of 1553, mustered all her power to drag the Church of England back into the Roman Catholic Church, burning or beheading more than 300 men, women and children who refused to give up their faith. Because of her ruthlessness, the Queen earned the nickname Bloody Mary. Among the martyrs were the bishops Cranmer, Ridley and Latimer. Thomas Cranmer, Archbishop of Canterbury, brought the English Bible to every church in the land and with the help of Nicholas Ridley, the brilliant Bishop of London, wrote the Book of Common Prayer and the Articles of Religion which laid down the biblical worship practices and beliefs of the Church of England. And Bishop Hugh Latimer preached the good news of Jesus Christ with greater boldness than anyone in England. For over 25 years, Latimer, Ridley and Cranmer laboured to advance the Protestant Reformation in England. But in 1553, soldiers under orders from Queen Mary seized the three bishops, hauled them to the Tower of London and threw them into the dungeon. A royal proclamation condemned their books as well as those of Luther, Tyndale and others. After suffering for months in the dark cells of the tower, they were sent to Oxford for trial. A great crowd thronged St. Mary's Church in Oxford, eager to witness the trial of the famous bishops. Ridley and Latimer were tried first, before a tribunal of church officials and university professors. The chief accuser, putting on a concerned expression, rose and approached the white-haired 70-year-old Latimer, saying, Master Latimer, for God's love, consider your position. You have had the office of bishop. You are a learned man. Consider that if you die now, you die without grace, for outside the Church of Rome there can be no salvation. Latimer's Bible hung from a leather strap on his belt. His spectacles, tied to a string around his neck, rested on his chest. Though Latimer's body was stooped with pain, he stood as straight as he could and he answered boldly, I know perfectly by God's word that the true church is in all the world, but its foundation is not in Catholic Rome, only as you, as you say. The true church is ruled by God and the scriptures. The churchman pointed at Ridley and Latimer and demanded, Swear allegiance to the Pope, confess your heresies and you will live. But Ridley and Latimer stood their ground and attempted to respond with biblical answers. Though they were often interrupted with hisses from their accusers, who acted more like barnyard animals than scholars. After two days of hearings, the church court excommunicated them from the church and turned them over to the crown for punishment. Queen Mary ordered their execution. On Wednesday, October 16, 1555, most of Oxford gathered across from Balliol College outside the town's north gate to watch the executions. Ridley wore a black robe, Latimer a worn coat and buttoned cap. The two men warmly embraced when they met at the stake. Ridley smiled and said, Be of good heart, brother, for God will either ease the pain of the flames or else strengthen us to endure it. Latimer nodded, saying, God is faithful. He will not let us be tempted beyond what we can bear. They knelt in the dirt and prayed then spoke quiet words of comfort to one another. A priest delivered a sermon accusing Latimer and Ridley of terrible heresies, condemning them to the fires of hell. At the close of the sermon, Ridley asked, May we say a few words to the people? No, thundered the priest. You may speak only to recant your errors. Well then, said Ridley, I commit our cause to Almighty God who shall fairly judge all. They removed their coats and prepared to die. Ridley lifted his hands and prayed, O oh, Heavenly Father, I give to you most hearty thanks, for you have called me to be faithful unto death. Lord God, have mercy upon the realm of England and save her from all her enemies. God strapped the two bishops to the stake with a single iron chain, binding them tightly around the waist and surrounding them with straw and wood. As the bailiff stepped forward with a torch, Latimer said, Be of good cheer, Master Ridley, and play the man. We shall this day, by God's grace, light such a candle in England as I trust will never be put out. As the flames rose up, Ridley said in a loud voice, Lord, receive my spirit. And Latimer said, Lord, receive my soul. Meanwhile, Thomas Cranmer, stri stripped of his ministerial robes and dressed in rags, was threatened and abused. His persecutors scraped his hands and fingers raw, signifying that he was no longer a minister of the church. Through it all, Cranmer refused to condemn the Protestant Reformation or his writings. 
Then his persecutors changed tactics. They transferred Cranmer from his dank prison cell to a comfortable room in the home of an Oxford dean. Scholars and priests lavished him with kindness, urging him to return to the Catholic Church of Rome. Dr. Cranmer, they told him, If you would just recant some of your views, you would win the Queen's favour and be quickly restored to your great office in the church. After enduring harsh treatment for three years, the kindness threw Cranmer off guard. Little by little, he agreed to change his mind until at last he signed his name to a paper which read, I, Thomas Cranmer, late Bishop of Canterbury, do renounce all heresies and errors, not in agreement with the Church of Rome. I acknowledge the Pope as the supreme head of the Church whom all must obey. I believe in the seven sacraments, purgatory, and prayers to the saints. I am sorry that I ever thought otherwise and led others away from the Church of Rome. Hoping to discourage the Protestants, church leaders printed his confession and publicized it throughout England. Yet despite his confession, Queen Mary insisted on his death and sentenced him to burn at the stake. Church officials decided that on the morning of the execution, Cranmer should speak against the Reformation and warn everyone against the Protestant faith. St. Mary's Church overflowed with spectators who had come to hear the old Archbishop speak and to watch him die. All eyes fixed on Cranmer, who wore a torn, dirty robe and stood on a raised platform opposite the pulpit. He bowed his bald head as he listened to a preacher condemning the Reformation and Cranmer's part in it. But, the preacher added, his eyes scanning the assembled throng, Dr. Cranmer has confessed his sins and recanted his errors and he will address you now. Cranmer knelt, sighed deeply and prayed, O Father, have mercy on me, a most miserable sinner. I have offended against both heaven and earth more than I can say. Have mercy upon me, O Lord, for your great mercy. Then he rose and faced the congregation, tears brimming in his eyes. I desire to speak a few words before I die by which God might be glorified and you might be instructed in the faith. In solemn tones he urged them to love one another and care for the poor. And now, he said, raising his voice for all to hear, I come to the great things which troubles my conscience more than anything I ever did in my whole life. I now renounce the things written with my hand against the truth in my heart. I was fearing death and I wrote that recantation to save my life. And because my hand has offended, writing against my heart and against God, my hand shall be punished, for when I come to the fire it shall be burnt first. And as for the Pope, I refuse him as Christ's enemy with all his false doctrines. Stop the heretic's mouth, someone cried. Murmurs and shouts erupted throughout the church. Lead the heretic away, came the order. As the crowd cheered loudly, guards pulled Cranmer from the platform and pushed him through the drizzling rain to the same spots where his friends Ridley and Latimer were killed. As the fire began to rise, Cranmer, true to his word, stretched out his right hand, held it unflinchingly in the flames and said, This unworthy right hand, this hand has offended. And he too died in the flames. The candle lit by Ridley, Latimer and Cranmer was not put out. Their brave deaths strengthened the Protestants to press on, and within a few years Bloody Mary died and the Reformation was fully restored in England. 